Hey guys, uh, we're here for our next session. Uh, we have Ken, co-founder and CPO of Enigma. He'll be doing a talk around under the hood of a coin mixer, uh, technical trade-offs and design decisions. I'll let him take it from here. Can you guys confirm in the chat that you can hear him once he starts talking? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Can Kusegu. Um, so I'm Turkish and, and Ken is actually pronounced John where I come from. Um, thanks for tuning in. Can you hear me? Perfect. All right, so uh, I guess I'll uh, dive right into it. Uh, I'm sorry, one second. All right. Um, cool, thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned, my name is John Kusagun. I uh, am one of the co-founders and I lead product at Enigma. Uh, at Enigma, our uh, mission is to ensure adoption and usability of decentralized technologies. We are trying to achieve this mission by enabling blockchains to handle sensitive data. The way we do that is by creating a privacy preserving smart contracting platform, which enables smart contracts or blockchain functions to run with encrypted inputs. We call these uh, secret contracts um, since they have encrypted inputs. And today I'm going to uh, tell you a bit about how we use these secret contracts as a way to achieve transactional privacy in our network. And um, I'll use, um, so this is, so Salad is our, uh, you know, uh, is our transactional privacy product. It's a secret contract. And I'll use this chance to talk a bit about our network and uh, kind of go over the advantages that uh, it, it, it has. Um, so uh, the problem of privacy, I think is, is uh, quite obvious. All data on blockchains are public uh by by default and in the context of smart contracts this leads to either issues of usability or uh you know just like privacy issues that you know prevent uh certain applications from being fit for uh for the public blockchain ecosystem and um when i talk about transactional privacy uh most people kind of uh, think of like oh like why do we need transactional privacy like, do we need to hide something uh, are we criminals, etc. But uh, I think I, we should caution ourselves that uh, like, this is not, uh, you know, the, the uh, privacy is a basic human right, and there are legitimate cases that need privacy. For example, in the crypto space, a lot of people pay their employees or uh, contractors in crypto, and like having these uh, payments be completely auditable by the entire network. Um, is creates issues. Um, so we have been working on privacy for, for a while now. Uh, we started in 2015 while we were researchers at MIT. Uh, my co-founder Guy Ziskin uh, wrote two papers, uh, Decentralizing Privacy and uh, Decentralized Computation Platform with Guaranteed Privacy, mostly around the con concept of multi-party computations. And these are among the high, uh, most cited papers in the blockchain slash privacy space. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, um, we are uh, we've been busy building a uh, protocol that enables decentralized applications to compute over encrypted data. Uh, we call our contribution to the ecosystem secret contracts. Secret contracts use uh, a privacy preserving computation technique that allows inputs to remain encrypted and hidden from the entire network and all the nodes at all times. Um, so um, to give you a bit of uh, information about uh, the Enigma blockchain, it's uh, it's built on a Cosmos SDK. So uh, we are part of the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, and in this blockchain, we have inputs and outputs to a contract encrypted. Uh, we have the state uh, that's encrypted and all those encryption uh, properties are achieved by having validators that run trusted execution environments for encryption. Um, if you're uh, not familiar with the trusted execution environment, it's a, it's a, it's a hardware chip uh, in a server that is not accessible by 
the uh, you know owner of the server. In this case, the validators cannot access the uh, uh, the trusted execution environment, and that's how we achieve uh, uh, privacy. The network uh, works with tendermint consensus, so it's a proof of stake network, and um, the native coin in the network is called Secrets, and it's used to pay uh, for computation um, and network incentives. Um, so let's kind of go over how these secret contracts work. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the inputs in this uh, in this network are always encrypted. The way we achieve this is by uh, using um, like elliptical curve development protocol, where uh, a user is a user is able to create an ephemeral key to encrypt its uh, its inputs and send it to the network. Uh, once the inputs are sent to the network, they're stored in the state. And since the uh, since the inputs are encrypted, we call the state encrypted state. And then uh, a validator who is chosen uh, based on a proof of stake algorithm uh, uh, gets the inputs from this from the state. Um, I'll touch on how uh, the decryption happens in a bit, but. Uh, the validator is able to decrypt the inputs inside the enclave, um, so it doesn't really have access to what the inputs are. And once the computation takes place and validators form consensus, uh, Enigma uh, secret contracts can just uh, have uh, results encrypted and stored on, uh, on the state, or we can have results that are encrypted uh, for a particular user. And this becomes interesting when you want to um, enable certain applications where only uh, one user is able to see the uh, outputs of a, of a contract. Um, and similarly, secret contracts can trigger uh, function calls uh, with encrypted outputs, which I will touch uh, on a bit uh, while in the following slides, and can send transaction messages. So uh, let's kind of uh, uh, zoom into Salad. Salad is our... Um, uh, is our coin mixing, mixer contract. We call it Salad because we think privacy is healthy. Um, the user flow in Salad is a user creates a single transaction where they deposit the amount of secret they want to mix and their encrypted recipient address to, uh, to the Salad secret contract. The encrypted recipient address is uh, ideally uh, a brand new address that's never been used before and using Salad, um, a user, say Alice, is able to break the link between her, uh, you know, um, her wallet with where her, her funds are sitting and her new wallet that she wants to use to pay um, uh, certain parties or open, uh, you know, CDPs or whatever. Um, the contract itself has some criteria, uh, which is uh, a participation-based quorum and a time limit. Uh, this is, is required to make sure that. Um, we can prevent some de-anonymization attacks. And uh, when both of these conditions are, mix, are, are met, the mix is executed. Um, in order to execute the mix, some user needs to call the secret contract. Uh, this is very similar to someone uh, calling uh, CDPs in the Maker ecosystem. Once uh, this external call is made, the validator who's chosen to work on that block uh, is able to uh, you know, decrypt the uh, addresses, uh, inside the enclave, shuffle it, and all validators do this locally. And um, through that, they're able to uh, compute the results and, and form consensus. And when the shuffle is complete, um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, there's a, a function call with encrypted outputs, encrypted outputs being the shuffled list of recipients. Um, and uh, that function call triggers a send transaction message where N transactions are sent out from the um, salad secret contract. Um, I'm just checking to see. And then, uh, so I'm just checking to see whether there are any questions at this point. I guess not very much. Okay, cool. Um, so in terms of uh, the developer experience are uh, contracts that are written in Rust. Uh, they're co they compile to WebAssembly, and uh, we're working with Cosm Wasm, which is the Wasm, mod Wasm based uh, smart contracting module in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, once secret contracts are written, they're deployed to the blockchain, and uh, secret contracts have auditable codes. So, as a user who's going to interact with the 
contract. You can see what the contract is able to do, um, so there are no surprises. And um, a secret contract can receive deposits and encrypted messages. So in Sal's case, uh, the deposits are the amount that, uh, that a user wants to mix, and the encrypted message is the recipient address. So um, I'll take the questions at the very end. Um, sorry. Uh, users participating in the mix, again, uh, I mentioned you do a single transaction as a user. This transaction uh, sends a deposit and uh, the encrypted uh, recipient address by interacting with the compute module on the Enigma blockchain. The way the inputs are in encrypted are through a Diffie-Hellman scheme. Um, uh, Diffie-Hellman is a symmetric encryption. So what happens is the user uh, requests a key uh, a, a public key from the network uh, and using the public key that's uh, provided by the network plus uh, her private key, Alice can create this ephemeral key to encrypt her recipient address. Then this encrypted recipient address is passed to the network and because the network is able to know Alice's uh, public key and the validator's private key, Alice's message can be decrypted uh, inside uh, uh, the enclave where the secret contract logic runs. And um, before the inputs are, are, in, are, are decrypted, they're stored uh, on the state. And um, a validator, when there's uh, you know all these uh, enough uh, the quorum or the requirements are met, the validator is able to um, collect these encrypted inputs from the encrypted state decrypt it, run the computation, um, which is, again, shuffling the, um, the inputs by uh, uh, a random number generated inside uh, the network. We do uh, a shared randomness inside the network. And then um, the validator or the contract can trigger the transactions that go out of the secret contract. So that's kind of how uh, Salad works. Um, the, um, I guess, so why should we care about salads? Um, in the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that, um, that one of the things that we try to improve upon is usability, and our salad fits in that category. If we look into zero-knowledge-based mixes, uh, like Tornado Cash, these mixes require users to do two interactions in order to complete the mix. Uh, one of the, the, the first uh, interaction is to, is to create a proof, and then the second interaction is to um, verify that you know that proof uh, by submitting the proof and a recipient address at a later time. And this requires two uh, separate interactions at, at, at two distinct times. And if you think about how we uh, you know, send money or, or eat uh, on, on MetaMask, that's, that's not our, uh, uh, the user flow that we go. We just hit send and you know, uh, we wait for the transaction to be mine. Uh, the exciting about Salad is we can replicate the same user experience while achieving transactional privacy because, as I described, in Salad, the user creates only one transaction, uh, which both has the recipient address and the, uh, the deposit amount. And when that transaction is uh, processed by the network, the funds are deposited at the new address, and the user does not have to come and do another interaction. Um, so next steps for Salad, uh, we are in the process of, um, so I'm not sure how familiar you are, but we were working primarily as a layer two solution for Ethereum. And uh, beginning of this year, we, need to, we, we pivoted to our own uh, layer one solution. So uh, we need to deploy uh, Salad, which was written uh, for the uh, Ethereum network in the new uh, Cosmos uh, chain. Um, integration with wallets is something we care a lot about because we don't foresee um, this to be a standalone application, but a complementary piece to the existing uh, transaction user experience. And uh, while, we're in the, uh, while we're looking for privacy solutions for in the Ethereum ecosystem, we had really uh, encouraging conversations both with MetaMask and uh, my Ethereum wallet because of the, this um, user experience benefits of Salad. And then um, uh, once we deploy our mainnet, we will uh, focus on um, interoperability with other chains, Ethereum and Cosmos. Um, so these are the kind of things that we want to do with Salad. Uh, in the case of um, DeFi uh, broadly, how can uh, Enigma network be 
relevant. I think um, one thing that um, we can allow through this encrypted state and secret contracts is the ability to run uh, private auctions or private order books. Um, also, another advantage of uh, of secret contracts is it prevents front running because uh, since the validators cannot see inputs that are coming into the network, they cannot compete uh, to uh, front run users and, uh, and 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 make profits. And um, for us, uh, as I mentioned, what's next for Enigma? We are going to um, we're we're a month or two away from finalizing the second version of our blockchain, which will power these um, secret contracts. Uh, and then we plan to do uh, an incentivized test that when that's out, and then uh, hopefully get our mainnet with secret fun contract functionality out towards the uh, you know Q3, Q4 times. And once uh, we're a fully functional network with uh, secret contracts, we uh, will prioritize interoperability with Cosmos and Ethereum ecosystems uh, through IBC, and uh, we'll see how Peggy is uh, by that time. That's kind of what's uh, uh, what we what we do, uh, and uh, like as for quieting thoughts, why should we care about secret contracts? Because uh, it can create significant usability improvements. Assuming that adoption is still an issue in our ecosystem, I think usability is something that we should all be very mindful of. I just gave you an example of how usability can be improved in the context of uh, transactional privacy, but uh, it, we can. Uh, extrapolate this idea to um, any applications that remit, re, that require commit reveals, such as governance or uh, games like cheese wizards or like rock, paper, scissors. Uh, this can eliminate front running, which is an issue um, in, um, especially in DeFi. And then uh, I guess it's interesting because we can build new applications that we couldn't build before, leveraging the encrypted state and um and encrypted output functionalities so uh with that i'll i'll wrap it up and uh, i'll go over the chat to see if there are any questions but um i guess uh, if you have any questions if you want to uh stay up to speed we uh use our uh, developer forum very actively as the first link that you see i'm just going to write it here as well uh in case uh people uh find that more helpful. Um, and uh, you can join also our Discord and um, and check other documentation that we have. Um, now I'm looking at the questions right now. Uh, Rahim says, can oracles be encrypted as well? Um, if you, yes, because if you treat the oracle as a user in the, in the network, you can have uh, the user input or the oracle input that comes into the network encrypted and only be decrypted by certain applications. Yes, that's uh, that would be possible. Um, I'm curious whether you had a specific use case in mind where you would want to have encrypted Oracle um, uh, inputs to the network. If so, feel free to uh, you know either use the chat or, or write to us in our forum. Um, that's all I have for uh, for us today. Uh, I'm gonna ah, there are questions that I see. Perfect. Um, can token be tainted before going into the mix? Well, um, by I guess by this you mean like is there like a UTXO model where where uh, I mean I, I guess trick. I'm not sure if I understand what you mean by by tainted. Uh, but from a, uh, from an on-chain perspective, what happens is say there are 10 people mixing and what you see on-chain is uh, there are 10 inputs um, or 10 deposits to the, uh, to the uh, salad contract. The recipient addresses cannot be, cannot be observed by, by an outsider. And then there are 10 outputs from that salad uh, secret contract. So you have like, you know, one tenth or whatever, one N chance of any of the recipient addresses being tainted uh, afterwards. So, um, so like, uh, yeah, I guess like the, the whole idea is to break the link between a sender and a recipient. And the bigger the anonymity uh, pool, uh, or bigger the, uh, the participation pool, better anonymity guarantees you have. 
Um, does the mixer reward liquidity providers? Um, yes, this is something that we have been thinking a lot about because um, like if you think about mixer can also be an interesting way of earning passive income on an asset, right? Because the bigger the, the uh, liquidity pool or the anonymity pool, the, uh, the better anonymity you get as a, as a mixer. So, um, you know, we could see a system where there are some fees that are paid to the mixer and those fees are used to incentivize, um, incentivize liquidity providers to, uh, you know, to provide more liquidity and earn passive income. Um, as an alternative passive income, the the while this is a great idea, the, the the problem there is we need to be careful about how um, like how to uh, balance the trade-off of uh, providing additional uh, liquidity by rewards versus keeping people who uh, you know who genuinely want to mix because if you have ten people who are mixing and like you know say one person just wants to mix and then the nine are encouraged by the by the liquidity incentives and like you know if the nine continues to participate obviously i'm simplifying a lot but you can see how the privacy guarantees for that one serious user uh goes down over time so uh, i think this is a, a great idea and something that we've been uh, thinking as well but um i, I mean at this point um we need to do some work to, to move it from an idea to an actual like, you know, executable stage. I'm also going to share some of the links that I have um, on, the, on the slides here so uh, it can help uh, folks. Uh, testnet timelines, so um, we launched a uh, our mainnet in in February, mid February, and at and, and the mainnet that's running currently only does uh, uh, sending coins and then governance. Uh, our version two of our uh, of our mainnet is going to be secret contract support. In order to achieve, in order to get to that that milestone, we need to do three things. The first one was to just like implement uh, vanilla cosm wasm to make sure we can run smart contracts. Like that was very easy. The second milestone was to have that Cosm Wasm module run inside uh, a trusted execution environment and in JX. We have uh, completed that uh, a week or so ago. Uh, and then um, the, uh, the, the last milestone is to actually um, have add encryption to the Cosm Wasm module that's running inside the Enclave. So we're working on that right now. Um, we're hoping to finalize uh, in the next month and a half too. So once that's done, uh, we uh, plan to move ahead with the, with the test nets and uh, like, uh, like adding the mixer is, is, is quite easy uh, in the grand scheme of things. We had the mixer code like ready for our, uh, our previous network. So we'll just like uh, take some of the code and then uh, make sure that it's uh, working, it's cause and wasn't. So those are uh, our, our timelines. Uh, I'm also uh, putting a link from my forum about this input, output, and state encryption and how that works for those who may be interested. Um, All right, I guess um, if there are no more questions, I guess we can wrap up. Have you had a chance to check the oh. questions and ask a question? I have. Okay, so there's one more question, actually. Uh, can nodes run without SGX? Uh, right now, they can because we don't have secret contract functionality. But um, when the network upgrades, um, that will be a proposal and assuming it's like voted favorably on. No, you will have to have uh, an SGX device in order to run a node. All right, fantastic. This is great. Uh, we're going to transition to our next session then, unless there oh. are any last questions.
All right, cool. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. Thank you for tuning in and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye. Right, take care.